to episode 8 of the electric motorhome thanks for watching and today what's going to happen is we're going to show you what we've got for the power supply so far and it is an alternator which is 20,000 watts at 460 volts uh, 60 hertz and a Volkswagen engine an old engine but it works good and also we're going to use batteries to, uh, the batteries will run a DC motor which will turn the alternator as well as the Volkswagen engine will also turn the alternator it's all done by um, I'm thinking pulleys pulleys sound like a good idea at this point yeah let's not forget the pulleys so here we go and we're off now this is a Volkswagen type 1 engine from 1971 I just got it a couple of weeks ago and uh, I stripped it all down, cleaned it, painted it, put points on, distributed the cab of course, leads and spark plugs, replaced the ignition coil, actually didn't have one on, and have put on a temporary gas tank just to see if this thing works with fuel filter. And then here I built this little control box with that gives power to the fuel cutoff and also to the ignition coil. And the button underneath is for the starter motor, which is just mounted on this piece of transmission that I cut in half. And that's the only reason we need that. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get this thing to run. I've just wired it up last night and I'm not sure what's going on. Anyhow, put that terminal on the battery and then switch on this little switch here to give power to the coil and the fuel cut off. Hold it and press the starter. Oh, 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 oh look at that! Oh, yeah! So on the shaft of the gearbox, I'm going to mount this guy, which is a pulley wheel. Of course, I'm going to have to get a core made for it and drilled out. But anyhow, it's going to be a pulley wheel on there. This is a 460 volt, 20,000 watt generating alternator. And as you can see, it's quite a large thing but it looks really nice and opening up the cover you can see that this is wired for three phase and the electric motor that runs the motor home that is going to be turning in the transmission that is three phase two so this is all matched and um, you can see phase one two three and also it has here an AVR which is an automatic voltage regulator so it should keep us uh, at 460 volts when the alternator is turning. So before we add any more weight to this vehicle I think it would be a good idea to check the brakes which I've just done and I decided to bleed the brakes at the back went through no fluid coming through so I took off the assistant master cylinder at the back cleaned it all out put all together put new seals in still no brake fluid through so it's time to check the front upon further inspection I discovered that the master cylinder the master brake cylinder was not pushing any fluid to these three pipes here these brake lines so I've took the master cylinder out I want to check it out see what's going on there it's brand new so I don't know what's going on 
Turns out the reason why there was no fluid coming through the brake lines is because when I put on this new master cylinder, I did not bleed the master cylinder itself. So this was total ignorance on my part. I did a bench bleed on this one and uh, there's loads of information on YouTube on how to do that. So my next thing is to actually bleed the brake lines. When you're bleeding the brakes, it's very important to use your brake fluid and keep this thing topped up. Because if it's not topped up, you're going to start pumping air down the lines and that's not what you need. That's what was the problem in the beginning. If you've got old brake fluid in the system, pump it out and put fresh in all the way new. Then you won't have any conflicts between different types of brake fluid. Okay, so making sure that the brakes are good is very important. I know that this is not to do with electricity of the electric motorhome, but just by the fact that I'm using a motorhome as the base for this experiment slash project, I need to make sure that everything is good and safe. So. Putting the jack under there, I've got a nice really heavy duty jack that came with this motorhome so we know it can take the weight. And now I'm just going to climb underneath. Then once the jack has reached the desired height, it's a good idea to put a jack stand next to it or in that vicinity. So if this fails and the thing comes down, you don't get squished. Well, upon further checking out, I've just been trying to bleed the brakes and what's happening is there's a tandem brake cylinder in the middle of the vehicle so I'm going to just bypass that and it's just like a slight adjustment to the braking system but I'm not going to be going that fast to where I'm going to be jamming brakes on and stuff like that so I'm going to the auto parts store and uh, buy a piece of brake line with two ends and will connect it to the existing pipes. So the brake line here coming from the master cylinder is directly coupled to the brake line going to the rear left wheel. So I use a, a brass coupling that I got at the auto store. Works great. And the tandem brake cylinder here, I'll just wiggle it so you can see it. Okay, so this end here was attached to a spring which was attached to this rod here <laughs> which did a bend and went down onto the axle and just held in place. So it was something to do with the relationship of the movement of the, the axle to the body which opened or closed the cylinder valve inside the tandem master cylinder. And here is the culprit. This is the tandem brake cylinder for the back wheels. The way this works is the uh, brake line comes in here from the master cylinder at the front of the motorhome and then it goes out here to the rear left wheel and then from what would normally be the bleeding nipple on the back wheel is replaced by a brake line and that brake line goes from the left back wheel to the right back wheel so to bleed the back brakes you can only bleed it from the right back wheel a wacky idea and the way this works is there are two bolts here that attach to the chassis of the motorhome and then this thing here see how it's moving I like that right so this the body is attached to the chassis and this part here is attached to a spring and it's supposed to be set approximately seven and three quarter inches and I guess when you put your brakes on the body somehow moves and adjusts this maybe a fifth or an eighth, eighth of an inch and that's it I bypass that and sure enough the brakes work fine without it so what another wonderful design. The handbrake did not work. So I took the wheel off 
and adjusted the handbrake so now we have a full system of braking. On to the next project which is loading in the alternator. It's going to go in the back. I'm not going to have it hanging off the back, it's going to go in the back of the motorhome. And we'll put some a seat over it or something, no problem. Alright, so thanks for watching, we'll see you next episode.